Hey guys, what's up? My name's Caleb, aka The Furniture Cowboy. My wife and I have gone full-time furniture flipping here in Austin, Texas, transforming random pieces we find into something truly spectacular. For this video, we're going to be doing a full restoration on a mid-century piece, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So first things first, one of the tracks was loose, so I put a new nail in that and fixed it right up. Mid-century pieces are kind of known for their light reddish tones throughout the veneer, but this one was a little dark for our liking, and parts of it looked like it sat in a bowl of Hawaiian punch for years, so we're going to be stripping it all the way down and trying to bring it back to that classic mid-century look. Once we applied a pretty heavy amount of stripper to the drawers, we covered those in saran wrap and then it was time to cut off the base. Mid-century pieces often have this kind of sort of a base, but not really a base, so I like to cut it off when I can. We tried using the guide for our circular saw, but it wouldn't fit when we were cutting this piece, which was pretty unfortunate because that would have given us that perfect edge, but we did the best we could with what we had, and if you have a track saw, that would make this super easy. Once we finished up the cuts, it was just held in by a couple screws, so we popped those out and it came right off. Since we need gravity to help us out, we stripped both sides of the dresser and the top of the dresser individually, again going in with a pretty heavy amount of stripper and wrapping it in the saran wrap. For this project we're using citrus strip, but I would actually recommend going with something a little faster acting and more powerful. One big mistake we could have avoided is using citrus strip because their new formula is known to leave dark spots on the wood. Another way to fix this and something we'll definitely do going forward is to use oxalic acid to even out the wood tones and any discoloring. Once that stripper had done its job, we went in with a nylon brush and agitated it before scraping it off. We followed that up with some mineral spirits and the nylon brush once again before wiping everything clean with a sponge. We repeated that same process for the other side of the dresser, the top of the dresser, and the drawers. And this part's pretty cool to watch. So I'll stop talking and let you guys enjoy the show.
Alright, with all that out of the way, we let the mineral spirits dry for a solid 12 hours before moving on to cleaning up the surfaces. I started off with the orbital sander before realizing that if I just did that, I would be there all day. So I decided to start with the carbide scraper, take off as much leftover gunk as I could before moving on to sanding. I love watching it slowly get closer and closer to bare veneer. Once we were done with the body, we moved on to the drawers, which was a little tougher because since each drawer is obviously not as heavy as the body, it was hard to get leverage on it without it moving when I was using the carbide scraper, but my lovely wife came in and helped, and with a little elbow grease, we made quick work of those as well. When we were flipping one drawer around, the dovetails totally came loose, so we had to pause to wood glue and clamp those back into place. Using the orbital sander, we were able to quickly sand down the top and the sides of each drawer, and then we moved right back onto the body. I was a little concerned about these outward beveled edges. I thought we were gonna have to hand sand them all down. Thankfully, I had enough control with the carbide scraper that I was able to go in and quickly take off the majority of that stain. We went back in on sanding the drawers, this time with a 220 grit to clean everything up. And then we finished up the body with a combination of orbital sanding, carbide scraping, and hand sanding. There was one spot on the top where the veneer was peeling up. So we went in with some wood glue and stuck it back down. Next up, it was probably my favorite part of the video, which is pre-staining the body and the drawers. I love watching it just bring all of that wood to life. Pre-stain is not necessary to use on every piece, but for pieces like this, I think it makes a huge difference in helping the veneer accept the stain more evenly. After wiping off any excess pre-stain, we went in with Minwax cherry wood gel stain throughout the body of this piece and all the drawers. And just like with the pre-stain, we wiped off any excess. Next up, we cleaned the hardware with Simple Green before giving it a beautiful new coat of gold spray paint. We're going to be attaching some new legs to this piece, so we stain those to match. Next, we did four light coats of polyurethane on all the drawers and the body. I almost forgot the legs, but we polyed those as well. We also did a clear coat on the hardware. Before the last coat of poly, we went in with a 400 grit sanding pad and sanded down all the drawers and the body. And for some reason, this left the drawers looking really dusty. And we were really worried for a second that we had ruined the entire piece. But thankfully, we were able to go in with some mineral spirits, wipe off that dustiness, let those mineral spirits dry for 15 to 20 minutes before doing our last coat of poly. Next, we attached all the handles. We actually attached them upside down, which I didn't realize, but I think it looks a lot better that way. Next. We thoroughly vacuumed out the body of the piece before it was time to attach the legs. If you're like me and you attach the legs last, you can find yourself in a tricky position because you might flip it on its back and realize you have nothing to attach the legs to. Luckily, I had some scrap wood lying around the garage, so I was able to cut it to length, drill some pocket holes, and create that structure for the legs to attach to. As you'll see here, the drill bit we needed to attach the legs was too big to fit in my drill. We had to head to Home Depot and pick up a spade bit. And 
with the legs attached, that was pretty much it. All that was left was to go in with some feed and wax on the inside of each drawer as well as the drawer front. And with that taken care of, we got it rolled over to our staging garage. This piece came with a glass cover for the top, which is always super nice because it lets people put stuff up there without having to worry about damaging the piece. So I wiped that off, put it back on top. Here's what the dresser looked like before, and here's what it looked like after. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are into this kind of thing, be sure to subscribe. We do daily reels as well as longer videos every week. The short videos don't count towards monetization on YouTube, so please watch my longer videos. Thanks again, guys, and have a flippin' awesome day.